Hello everyone, this is CypherDeck, and today we're going to be playing Return of Reckoning, an emulated Warhammer online server that I believe released around 2013 or 2014. The original release of Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning was in 2008, and it was created by EA and Mythic Entertainment, or as it went by EA Mythic the creators of Dark Age of Camelot as well. What was really interesting is during this time, during the time this released, was around the time I was kind of winding down from Dark Age of Camelot, a realm versus realm game, which that is also what this is. So when this was talked about uh, coming out, I was, I was stoked about it because it meant that I was able to play another realm versus realm game by the company that I enjoyed playing my last Realm vs. Realm game in. Of course, this only has two factions, where that had three. What makes it really interesting is the classes that are in the game. Uh, and how they work, their, their mechanics. You have classes that are really similar to each other. Like the uh, Disciples of Cain, which is a Dark Elf healer class that is a um, offensive melee class that also heals. The counterpart to that is uh, the Empire's War Priest, which is also up in your face, uh, also as a healer. And I think you assist the, the tank, and through them you do damage but also you, you're healing them. I, honestly, I've never played the two classes, but that is as close as I can get in comparison. Then you had classes that were nothing like each other, but were similar in, in the same, same uh, turn, which the best way I can explain that is the dwarves have the engineer who is a ranged melee, uh, or a ranged DPS, who has a turret that they put down that's rooted, and that turret will attack uh, for the engineer, while the engineer can also do a ranged attack. They have some melee abilities. The counter to that is the Magus of Chaos, and that class has a monster that's rooted in place, that does a lot of damage um also like a turret but uh the magus is it's called a range dps but it is actually better if it's um close up range because it has really strong uh direct damage um point blank uh attacks not pbaoe but just point blank attacks uh that make it a little bit different so there's that, and then you have a class that is nothing like anything else, which is the White Lion. It's a class that I played and will be playing, uh, and that is a two-handed, halberd carrying elf that has a war lion that stands by their side, and their, their abilities are linked together, or at least some of them are. Uh, they have an ability that if you're attacking one target and your pet is attacking another target you will do damage to your pet's target and your pet will do damage to your target but if you're within proximity you'll both do damage to both targets so it it is more beneficial for you to be within range uh, whenever you're using those abilities also the pet uh, gets these things called training. I called them stances. You can call them buffs, but it will bolster your your stats. Where at the same time, it will give abilities to your pet, and based off of the type of training or the stance, it will then uh, be better at holding aggro. Uh, it'll slow the target. It'll reduce their armor. Uh, or if you wanted to do more DPS, then it will reduce its aggro, but increase its attack and, um, and so forth. There's nothing like that on the other side. The only thing that you could compare it to is the squig herder who has a pet 
and also can get inside of a squig and change from a ranged damage class to a uh, melee damage class. <laughs> but that's really it. That, there really is no comparison to it. I guess it would be um, the squig herder is uh, a mix of a ranger or archer class with a pet. They just have a pet and they're able to use ranged attacks. That's not how the white lion is. But anyway, we're going to be playing a white lion. Let's go ahead and get into it and have some fun. All right, so here we are. Um, I went ahead and did a little bit of UI swapping or changing to the UI. So it has more buttons. Also, this right here will most likely be right up here uh, whenever you get into the game and you may not know what it is so uh, just so you know it is called state of the realm go ahead and click that off that way it's not in your face and like I said you can move it around uh, with the customized interface this is also where you can select how many bars you want uh, how many rows you want per bar the number of buttons you want per bar as well uh, load editor and as you can see there's a lot of things I usually don't touch very much here uh, I did touch this area and uh, like I said I also move this down just so it's not in my way and I moved I think the help tips up and the cast bar up um, so they're not down here but I might move the cast bar down here and then just make it smaller so I don't, really, I don't really need to see it. Uh, I just need to know that abilities are being casted. Or how long it's going to take if it's going to be a long cast. I'm going to go ahead and hit exit. And I'm going to say yes. Uh, but you can play around with this as much as you want. Just to see see what you, you like better. So uh, let's take a look at our abilities first off we have hack it's a basic uh, attack that does uh, 44 damage we have axe toss which is a range attack most likely won't be using this so I'm gonna put that there and then we have coal war lion coals a tamed war lion uh, to come forth and fight with you uh, you may only have one uh, have a single war lion at any given time which is uh, expected all right we're gonna go ahead and put that there and uh by the way you can name your pet if you want to it's just forward slash um i think it's name pet <laughs> think like and uh let's call him um domitus uh okay that's pet name pet name Dominus. There we go. And when we summon our pet, uh, it will have the name. Also, the pattern that you see on your pet is going to change. Uh, it's random. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the question. Also, B. Uh, you start out with two items Book of Binding. This will teleport you back to where you're bound or your rally point. And you get a pack mule. It's just a 25%. Uh, uh, run speed bonus. I usually don't use it uh, Go ahead and put that next to the sprint and then we'll put this guy Down here probably won't be using this very often anyway Maybe if you went pretty far to uh, get uh, to finish quests and you want to just go back to turn your quests in But most likely won't use that very often. All right, let's go ahead and get started new recruit speak with Samuel uh, Twitty nearby uh, accept that now, now when uh, you accept a quest you will see uh, a red section down here don't don't worry about this this is just a, an RVR area if you go into this area you'll be flagged for RVR and then we'll have to uh, uh, try to survive <laughs> but we can see here that this is uh, where our current quest is which is really close and it all, it's also marked on our map by this little circle right here. So we know that uh, he is right here. So we have completed that quest. We'll get some experience. 
On your way now. Which is a lot of experience. And now he wants us to kill three marauders. He'll give us experience and he'll give us some gloves. So let's go ahead and accept that. Alright. So one thing I wanted to show you guys is I'm going to send my pet to that mob over there. And I'm going to try to find another mob. I'll fight this one. <clears throat> and if my pet hasn't finished killing that one yet, uh, he's going to come and assist me before he uh, fight, uh, finishes fighting this one. Uh, also, uh, go to key mapping and uh, go to targeting. Scroll all the way down and you can set the loot nearest. Uh, if you're a pet class, this is probably the best thing to do. Also, for certain crafting uh, or um, cultivating for the for the crafting or gathering for the crafting, you'll uh, need to loot corpses as well. Uh, so this will just automatically loot these corpses for you. There you go. And that way it's just uh, a, that much easier for you. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy. There we go. We've looted. I've just put it by a, a button press. It's not. It's not like um, you can tell your guy to go to mob, kill mob, loot mob, that kind of thing. I just like the the convenience of it. All right, let's go ahead and complete that. And we did get a level. We got a new ability. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Speak with Lanrick amongst the burning houses in the village of Grimmenhagen. Grimmen, Grimmen Hagen? Yep. <laughs> Alright, um, we got our gloves. Let's go ahead and put those on. And we got this ability, which is called Blindside. Must be on your target's side or rear. Uh, you attack your enemy at a vulnerable, a vulnerable spot, dealing 53 damage immediately, and inflicting them with an ailment which deals... 93 damage over 9 seconds. Sounds good. Okay, into the fire. On your way now. It's going to level us again uh, pretty quick. Uh, and it wants us to go to the burning buildings near Laric and rescue anyone who may be uh, may have become trapped by the marauders. Break down the doors and also kill marauder torchbearers as well. Uh, we got a new ability. Okay, this is the training uh, thing. So if we click this, it'll buff us and it'll also buff the pet. Uh, this one is called Trained to Threaten. This is going to increase your pet's threatening uh, threaten ability. It's going to increase their toughness so that they can take damage a little bit better. But it is also going to give us a chance to critical hit uh, by 5%. So that's, that's kind of nice. And it uh, looks like we have another person over here who is um, just killing things without doing the quest apparently all right we're gonna open that door and I'm not really worried about it too much because we do have two over here which I'll go ahead and send my pet on There we go, we got all three of them. Now all we have to do is open doors. That way, in case they, they come and are just killing without doing quests, I can, I can at least say I have that part of my quest done. There we go. So once you get this ability, my pet gets abilities as well. Uh, they get Lion's Roar, which uh, taunts the enemy and uh, causes the enemy to deal 30% less damage uh, to everyone else other than the lion for 5 seconds. 
They get a shred which does uh, 50 damage and reduces the armor for 20 uh, of, by 24 for 20 seconds. And then also leg tear which deals 105 damage to the target every uh, uh, over 10 seconds. For the first 10 seconds the target will be snared reducing their movement by 40%. That's a pretty insane ability right there. All right, let's go ahead and complete that quest and um, speak with the career trainer, Elsa, in uh, Grimshagen Village Center. Uh, report to Victor Reese when you're done. All right, let's accept that. Make sure that I've loaded. Uh, by the way, B is your, your backpack. P is your character sheet. And um, K is for your tome of knowledge which is also where your quests are stored as well and you can get more information or you can just click over here and i'll open your tome of knowledge to that quest so that you can read about it here it's kind of a nice system i, I like the look of it and everything uh you do also have uh, abilities here which will show you all of your abilities and if you get crafting class uh, crafting abilities you'll have those here later on you'll get morale uh, which will uh, be abilities that you're able to use during combat and tactics which give you buffs like um, if you you have a 10% chance to do damage over time or something along those lines uh, it's another really cool aspect of the game Let's go. go ahead and talk to Elsa now the way the game is currently, and I don't know if they plan to change this or not, but you don't buy any abilities in the game. I kind of said about that, to be honest. Uh, if we look at our current uh, money status, you can see that we can uh, afford the level 4 ability, but we can't afford the level 5 ability, which, as you can see, we're leveling pretty quick. It's going to take time to be able to afford that. Uh, one of the things I remember back whenever I played the game is that sometimes you had to decide what abilities you were going to get because uh, at certain levels like 8 you get 3 abilities one of them being 44 uh, silver uh, and then 10 you get 2 abilities there uh, 12 you get 2 and then 16 you get 2 so I mean they would become pretty costly, and sometimes you'd have to go back and get abilities later on. But sadly, that's not in the game. Uh, that completes that part of the quest, so we can now talk to Victor. And uh, he is going to give us some boots, as well as some experience. Um, follow the road past the wheat fields uh, to the cannon hill, and then he wants us to use the griffin cannons to attack Raven Hell Cannons. Let's go ahead and get that. And I believe that is in this direction. Alright, so here we are coming up to the Griffin Cannons. Let's take control of one. And then enter Snipe Mode. And we need to take out these Hell Cannons. <laughs> and our pet's gonna go attack them for us. Oh! And there's a mob coming after us as well, apparently. Well, we still need one more, apparently. Hopefully they repair quickly because, uh... Oh yeah, get him, Lion. Get him! Tear him up! There we go. All right. Turn it 
turn fire completed level and now we need to kill uh, guardians of the hell cannons all right let's do that we got a new ability uh, coordinated strike this is the one I was talking about earlier I think uh, you and your war lion attack as a pack ravaging your enemies you strike your target for 40 damage your pet strikes its target uh, for 36 damage. If you're within 35 feet of your pet's target, you will also strike that enemy for 40 damage. And likewise, your pet will strike your enemy. What? Oh, hey. Um, accept. Thank you. All right. I got... Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will use that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, the this is that ability I was talking about. As long as they're within 35 feet, uh, they'll do damage. Let's go ahead and put the positional ability over here. And let's see if we can't use this. So we have this guy here. Let's go ahead and have him attack that. Attack that. And then have him attack this. We're going to then attack this guy with this ability, which should have done damage to both of them, but it doesn't look like it did. I can then come up to this guy, hit him with that side ability. Either way, it turned out pretty well, I think. And so that's two or three that we need. Let's go ahead and get this guy. Now we need a Magus. Alright. Well, I don't know what I was trying to do there. There we go. Take a look at this strength. Uh, yeah, we're going to use that. We just need one more of these guys and we're done. Now, one thing I think is interesting is that this is not what the uh, war, uh, the Rune Priest shoulders look like. This is what the um, what the White uh, Lion shoulders look like. No matter what class you play, I believe it's going to look like what your armor looks like, even though it's definitely not for your class. So it kind of makes it hard to discern. Uh, what is what is what as far as that goes? All right, let's go ahead and turn this in And complete that uh, Report uh, report to uh, Alrin uh, at the blacksmith shop. All right, we'll accept this uh, Let's go ahead and go back to town uh, Sell our stuff and see if we can't find any other quests before we go down there. All right, so I went ahead and sold. Uh, I did see a rune priest in town and went ahead and gave them those shoulders. Hello, Figured might as well pass along uh, the fortune, if you will. I got a, an axe. Go ahead and give them a, uh, a, a shoulder piece because shoulders are really hard to find early on. 
All right, so find the life of Sigmar. Let's take a look at our map. It says, um, life of Sigmar is here. So this is where we, we want to be. Maybe in this building. Again, if I read the quest, it probably says right there where to go. I got 200 experience for opening a door. And this is why I do not like mounts. Thanks, buddy. I mean, how much faster did he really get there ahead of me? Not very much faster. Goodbye. Except, um, actually, let's go ahead and read that. I didn't even read what. Speak with Stefan um, Busso. Uh, reward uh, and receive a reward for unlocking Sigmar's tome entry. So there goes okay. So it looks like he's right here on my map. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of the mounts uh, early on. Time's marching on. And we're rank level five. We got nature's bond, which is a heal for our pet. That's good. Yeah, put that over there with the rest of our pet stuff. And now we're going to go ahead and head over to... Uh, what was it? The blacksmith shop? That's down this, this area, I believe. Okay, so here we are at the blacksmith. And... Um, he wants us to head to Grimhagen Farm and participate in any stage of the Ravenhost Vanguard public quest. Return to Victor uh, race when done and report on your deeds. And we'll get a belt and 1900 experience. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let's go ahead and accept that. And I believe that is that house over there is the farm. But I think we're going to go ahead and end it for the day. I am going to leave in the description a really good um, video on how to install the game. If you're interested in playing, uh, go ahead and check in the description below. I don't really see a reason to make my own video as they did such a good job. I uh, don't really want to add something that doesn't need to be there. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. And uh, if you have any questions about the class or any other classes, something that you want to see me play, I didn't really list all the classes in the game. But uh, if any of the ones that I did mention sound interesting to you, I wouldn't mind showing those off. Uh, I don't know when uh, when I'll have another video. Hopefully tomorrow, maybe. I You know, I really am enjoying the fact of being back. Uh, in the game and uh yeah thank you all for watching hopefully you enjoyed this is cypher deck peace out